Don't worry. I'm not going to do a weak cliche, your mission if you should choose to accept it, joke opener for my intro as we go into my Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 spoiler-free review. No, 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 nothing like that. Instead, after I do the intro, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on a motorcycle and then I'm going to jump off a cliff like Tom Cruise. Yeah! And so what I've done is I've borrowed some cameras from the White House. And so surely I'm going to have some breathtaking video footage of my awesome jump, okay? Coming up next, stay tuned. In a world where the number of movies available is great, but many are so bad, you'll learn a new definition of hate. One man sifts and reviews through the movie sludge. One man will be the movie cop, jury, and judge. He goes by many names, but you know him by Movies America. Hey there, my movie maniacs, my fellow freedom-fueled film fanatics. Welcome to this latest episode of Movies America. I am your humble host, Van Eberts, and just come on in, welcome, all right? Kick up your feet, kick back, relax, ease your mind. And, uh, yeah, about that motorcycle jump video, that's going to be a no-go on the motorcycle show. Uh, the video was just not clear enough to show you the jump. Sorry, my bad. You blew it! Trust me, though, that jump was so sweet and so awesome and so badass and hot that a few of the women watching suddenly had immaculate conceptions. It was the darndest thing, I'll tell you. But if only those White House cameras would have worked and got that footage. Mm. Uh, it's a pain. It's a loss. Uh, but hey, let's get right into the Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 synopsis, okay? I'm just going to like not go through the entire synopsis, but just go uh, through part of it, uh, the beginning of it. Just let's go, let's go, I'm bored, let's go. Just to, just to get us all jumped off here. Kind of like I jumped up that bike off the cliff, okay? And so, obviously, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 stars Tom Cruise, maybe you've heard of him, uh, as Ethan Hunt, a IMF or a Impossible Mission Force agent. And you don't really get to see him, uh, or you don't get to see him right away in the movie, okay? The movie starts off with, like, this Hunt for Red October style, Crimson, Crimson Tide kind of style uh, submarine segment uh, where... where Introduced to the AI uh, villain in this, and that's not a spoiler because if you've, if uh, unless you've been in cryo sleep, you've heard the rumors on the internet and wherever else that the villain in this movie is AI. Okay, and so it just has a segment to introduce you to the villain and the sp supposedly foreboding villain uh, that is AI. They call it the entity uh, in this movie, and something happens, obviously. Okay. Uh, with that, and then we get like the familiar scene we see in most Mission Impossible movies, if not all of them, uh, where Ethan Hunt gets a package, you know, and uh, it's his, uh, you know, your mission if you should choose to accept it scene and you know, all that. They, the IMF uh, leaders uh, go through the mission coming up, you know, for him to go through all that. You know that, you know the scene I'm talking about right there. Uh, and then yeah, you, then you just. Uh, Proceed on through the movie, obviously, right? And along the way, you meet his team. You know, you've got Ving Rhames and, uh, as Luther, Simon Pegg as Benji. And you get some uh, characters from the past that show up uh, here. And it just, yeah, just proceeds on through uh, the beginning of the movie, letting you know what the stakes are and the villain and and what the... MacGuffin is because all these movies have you know a MacGuffin he's chasing like in Mission Impossible three they call it the rabbit's foot right um, 
and you know other things uh, like that. What's 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 some of the other ones there? Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, you get the point, right? You know what a MacGuffin is. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the extent I'm going to go through the synopsis. Uh, you know, with this movie, I mean, we're going to get further and further into the movie here with no spoilers. Don't you worry, okay? Uh, but let me uh, ask you really quickly here if you would just subscribe or follow this channel, okay? All right? The button's right down there, okay? Just click on it. Just click on it. And then hit that thumbs up or the like button and uh, like this video if you would, okay? It takes you like one millisecond to do that, okay? And hit the notification bell, all right? So, hey, with that, let's move on with the show. Now, Tom Cruise has been killing it since 1981. What an incredible run. And yes, that pun was intentional. It's surreal watching him way back in 1981 in Taps, just knowing where his career his career will go from there. Then he had uh, The Outsiders and then Risky Business and so on as part of the birth of his mind-blowing, decade-spanning career. Now, here we are in 2023, and we're in an, another decade where Cruz is still the biggest movie star. I mean, it's the fourth decade where he's pretty much the, the top gun of the movie biz. He may be a complete psycho off the screen. I don't know, but just keeping these, you know, just keep making these movies that are diamonds in an ocean of turds, or San Francisco, as the kids say. Now, think about all the legends that Tom Cruise has co-starred with. I mean, George C. Scott, Val Kilmer, Paul Newman, Dustin Hoffman, Robert Duvall, Jack Nicholson, Vanessa Redgrave, Gene Hackman, Holly Hunter, Jason Robards, Kurt Russell, Max von Sydow, Anthony Hopkins, Kenneth Branagh, Morgan Freeman, the late, great Bill Paxton. Russell Crowe, Ed Harris. Are you serious? I could go on, but I won't. (laughs) Now to the present and Cruz in this seventh mission movie. This guy is 60 freaking one, and he's still putting everything he's got into entertaining us. And I mean everything. I mean, let's see Ezra Miller jump a motorcycle off a cliff just to make our audience, or just to make our jaws drop, okay? Yeah, top that, Ezra Miller. When the dude isn't flying off planes, he's hanging off them, okay? He scales the world's tallest skyscraper. He jumps off of other skyscraper skyscrapers. He does his own motorcycle stunts. I mean, the guy has balls of solid rock and can act too. Now, I know it's not edgy to say that Tom Cruise can act, but he, but he can. He's a good actor. I mean... Just check out Jerry Maguire, uh, Born in the Fourth of July, A Few Good Men, okay, The Firm. He's a good actor, and you can see it in those movies big time. Now, that continues in this movie, not to the level of those movies, but, but, but good. Now, the one exception to that is there is something that happens in this movie where I don't think he brings the understandable emotion to the moment that he should, but uh, other than that, he's a consistent action badass in these mission movies, in these mission movies, and we get to reap the rewards. The action is for real in this, okay? During this movie, you'll have a seat, but you'll only need the edge, okay? (laughs) The movie doesn't hesitate to show how big it is. I mean, it starts right out with an impressive, tense mysterious Hunt for Red October-style submarine sequence. And that sequence, it helps establish the menace of the main villain of the movie. Now, I have to say right from the jump that I don't think the action in this movie is quite as good as it was in Mission Impossible Fallout. Now, that movie had the halo jump over Paris, uh, the bathroom fight scene where Henry Cavill famously did the whole lock and load arms thing. Uh, the breaking out of Solomon Lane and uh, the following uh, Paris chase, the London chase, and the uh, eye-popping helicopter chase, and then the crash uh, at the end. Now, to me, the way they did those action scenes were just visually cooler to me, okay? Especially the helicopter chase, where we got our first taste of the aerial vehicle camera placement, 
a setup that we'd later see in the Jets and Top Gun Maverick. And I know, I know, I hear you, I hear you. It's it's the Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 episode. I gotcha. Uh, now, the action scenes in this movie are almost as good as Fallout. Uh, there's that opening submarine sequence that I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a desert gunfight. There is a uh, Abu Dhabi airport chase. There's a uh, chase in Rome. Uh, there's a Venice nightclub fight and an ensuing chase. Uh, there's the big mountain jump that you've seen. I'm sure you've seen that Tom Cruise does. Uh, and then the train action sequence and then the crash, uh, again, that you've seen in the trailer. So I'm not spoiling uh, anything there. Um, now, I do think that for the train sequence, they did steal a, quite a bit from the 2008 movie called Wanted that had James McAvoy and Angelina Jolie in it that you might remember. If you haven't seen Wanted, check it out, okay? Watch it right after you're done watching this, okay? Uh, but yeah, it's had James McAvoy and Angelina Jolie in it. And they do steal quite a bit from that train sequence uh, in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Um, now, I do dig that. I do dig like how they used the old V-22 Osprey aircraft uh, in this movie, and then like the electronic surveillance capabilities in the Ospreys. I like how they they use that in this movie because it's just another way that this movie shows just how big it is. This movie is gargantuous, um, and this this movie. I mean, make no mistake. Okay, just like in Fallout. I mean, the guns, the cars, the aircraft, the submarines, the trains, the motorcycles, all thrown together in this kinetic, frenetic action extravaganza will provide some cinematic shock and awe right up in your face. Now, this show is spoiler-free, but this Thursday night on my Movies America spoiler warning show, there's going to be spoilers all over the place. All right, I'm going to spoil you rotten as I bust out the spoilers about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, okay? And that comes on this Thursday night at 7 Eastern, so that's 7 Eastern, 6 Central, 5 Mountain, and 4 Pacific, okay? And the great thing about that show is it's your chance to talk in depth and with spoilers and everything all about this movie, So if you've seen the movie by this Thursday night, and I predict a whole lot of you will have, then you definitely, you got to join me on this show, Movies America Spoiler Warning, where you can live chat with me, questions, comments, you know, observations about Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, okay? It's your chance to talk in depth about this movie. If you don't know anybody that you can nerd out with about movies, well, look right here. This is the guy right here. This guy. Check out his face. Doesn't this look like this is this a nerd out face right here? Yeah. So it's your chance. Ooh, beer burp. Pardon me. But yeah, all you have to do to uh, check out the show is on Thursday, just go to my Twitter page at Movies America. Hey, and while you're there, follow me. Okay. But on Thursday on my Twitter page at Movies America, you'll get the links to the show there for Movies America. Spoiler warning. Or on Thursday, you can just go to YouTube or Rumble and just basically just type in Movies America. Just type it on in, okay? And now the one thing about YouTube that's tricky is because YouTube is stupid, uh, when you type in Movies America, searching for that, the dumb YouTube, the idiot idiocy that, that YouTube is, it thinks you're trying to search for Movies America. And, nope. Uh, all, what you have to do on YouTube, not Rumble, because Rumble is cool and hip and intellectually dominant to YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, you have to click on the blurb that says, like, search instead for Movies America right below where you typed Movies America. Click on search instead for Movies America, and you'll find the Movies America show on YouTube. You might see it under Till Death Podcast Network, but you should see at least one entry. One entry for Movies America. Click on that. You'll see the rest of my shows uh, right there, uh, and including Movies America. Spoiler warning. But like I said, it's your chance to live chat with me, and I hope to see you there. The supporting cast is phenomenal for the most part. 
The first thing I need to say is the chemistry between Tom Cruise and Haley Atwell in this is electric. Now, you might be thinking that maybe this is because perhaps those rumors of them dating were true, but Haley Atwell recently killed those rumors in saying her and Cruz, they never dated. And interestingly enough, she actually considers him and director Christopher McQuarrie more like uncles. Now, Haley, or Haley, or well, Haley Atwell, she plays a, she plays like a, a thief. Or, or her character plays, or her character is a thief. Let me, let me go back. Her th- character is a thief, <laughs> reminiscent of the Anne Hathaway character that we saw in uh, The Dark Knight uh, Rises. Now, then there is the rest of the core four of Ethan Hunt's IMF team, okay? We get Ving Rhames and Rebecca Ferguson and Simon Pegg. Now, I said team in quotes because Ferguson's Ilsa technically isn't part of the IMF or the Impossible Mission Force. Now, they are all solid, And by this time in the franchise, I mean, they really do feel like a movie family to me, at least to me at this point, okay? They've been around for so many years, especially Rames. I mean, he's been in the mission game since way back in 1996 in the original, okay? I mean, and that's even more amazing to think of considering all the actors that have come and gone in these mission movies as part of the IMF. I mean, it's just amazing uh, to uh, think of. And then you have a newer character like Vanessa Kirby's White Widow character, who's the daughter, the daughter of Vanessa Redgrave's Max character from the 1996 Mission Impossible movie, you know, the OG. Now, the White Widow, she's mysterious and capricious, and she does all that as like a criminal underground X factor in these movies. Now, also, this movie does bring us full circle to the first Mission Impossible movie by bringing back Henry Zerny's Kittredge uh, character. Now, no red light, green light, bubblegum in this movie whatsoever, okay? Now, we also get that Days of Thunder reunion that we've all been waiting for. I know I have, okay? Cole Trickle and Russ Wheeler together again, okay? Because we get Carrie Elway's joining the cast. And then I also thought veteran actor Shea Wiggum was pretty good as the head clandestine services agent. And he's partnered actually up with uh, Greg Tarzan Davis, Coyote, from uh, Top Gun uh, Maverick. Now, uh, Greg Tarzan Davis, he's just one of two Top Gun Maverick actors that are in this. We briefly get to see Charles Parnell, Warlock, from Top Gun Maverick in this uh, movie. Now, Palm Clementioth, Mantis, from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, she's also in this as a female assassin. It looks like she popped right out of a John Wick movie, to be perfectly honest. And her character, she answers to a character called Gabriel, uh, that who is played by Isai Morales. Now, one of the many things that had me gigged about seeing this movie was Isai Morales playing a bad guy in this. Now, I've liked Isai Morales' work uh, ever since I first saw him way back in 1987 when he played uh, Bob in La Bamba. Uh, He played Bob, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips' Richie Valens character's brother, okay? Uh, That art contest, I won it. $500 $500 in prizes. That's like one of my favorite favorite lines from his character in that movie. Uh, the, the line that most people probably know from Isai Morales in La Bamba is, Richie! <laughs> That's a, I think there's a meme uh, or a gif of that out there somewhere. Now, sadly, Isai Morales just didn't bring it in this movie, okay? His character is just too stiff, too wooden. They wrote him like a boring extension of his Mexican drug cartel character, Dell, in uh, the TV series on Netflix called Ozark. What a waste. At least in this movie. Luckily, he's the only actor in this that self-destructs before five seconds. Your mission, if you should choose... Oh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. No, no, no. Okay. I'll, I'll just simply put it this way. 
please subscribe or follow this channel if you would, okay? And then also hit the like button down below as well. It's right there. It's a thumbs up button in YouTube. It might be the thumbs up button in Rumble as well. Go ahead and click that if you would. And then go ahead and hit that notification bell right next to it or somewhere in the vicinity where you can uh, click on that and then you're going to get a notification when there is a brand new sizzling, fresh, piping hot new episode of Movies America just for you, okay? And then also get in the comments down below in this episode as well, okay? Comment to me, questions, uh, you know, remarks, uh, tips and tricks, uh, some recommendations you have for me, a movie you want me to review, something like that, anything like that in there, okay? And then also check out tdpn.locals.com. That's our website where we have all our content like blogs and videos and articles all about movies and entertainment, hot button issues and politics, cocktail recipes, all that kind of stuff, okay? Pardon me. Um, and right now, if you go to tdpn.locals.com and put in promo code TDPN, you're going to get a free month. A free month, man. Pretty sweet, right? And then also, we have got an awards show coming up here down the road uh, called The Bannies. Yes, yes. Move over the Oscars. We've got The Bannies. Yes. And all you have to do is look for the Bannies link down in the description and just click on that. And it's just going to direct you to six categories that someone could win, okay? Six categories like most canceled TV movie personality or most canceled sports personality, something like that. So, stuff like that, okay? So there's six categories that you get to vote in, okay? And uh, it takes like a minute to do it. It's really quick, really quick. And it's fun, okay? Just got to vote for the bannies, okay? So again, that link for that is in the description below. All right, on with the show. To be honest, Christopher McQuarrie could direct these movies while playing Jenga, making salsa, doing an oil change, and juggling chainsaws all at the same time at this point. I mean, this is his third mission movie, and he's pretty much already done with his fourth mission movie, next year's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. And he's also a co-writer on this movie with Eric Gendrison, who was mostly known for his writing work on Band of Brothers before the Mission movies. Now, together they do write a very intricate screenplay. And just to warn you, there are some considerate conversational sequences in this movie to build up like character intentions, rapport, stakes, etc. An example would be like the director of National Intelligence meeting, or the Venice nightclub scene. Now, these heavily, heavily contribute to the movie's two-hour and 43-minute runtime. Now, like most of the other mission movies, don't dare try to multitask while watching this thing, okay? Because you'll miss a whole lot of stuff with the plot. These movies share that in common with your typical Christopher Nolan movies, I mean, every single time I watch The Prestige, I have to sit on the edge of my couch with a notebook and a Texas Instrument calculator, okay? Um, now, one minor complaint I have to make about the screenplay in this movie and in the last two, movie, two movies is the relationship between Ethan and Ilsa. Now, you write them so that they're totally into each other, but they never kiss? I mean, I get it. A steamy sex scene does not fit within the world or the MPAA rating, for that matter, of the mission movies, okay? However, if a woman that looks like Rebecca Ferguson was into me and I knew it, you bet your ass I wouldn't be able to keep my hands off her, okay? Now, I'm not expecting that in mission movies and Mission Impossible movies, but nothing but constant trips to the hug zone? <laughs> Well, I don't want to make that intro a liar, so I will agree that it is brew review time. Yeah, come on in, take a little break from a Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 to bring you a little brew review time. And, of course, that calls for the brew, right? So let me grab that for you, uno momento. All right, so... 
This episode's Lucky Brew is the Honey Citrus Blonde from Community in Dallas, Texas, okay? And this is like 6% uh, alcohol, alcohol by volume or ABV and about 18 on the IBU for, as far as bitterness goes, IBU, International Bitterness Units, uh, if you're concerned about the bitterness from hops and that kind of thing. So 6% ABV and then 18 IBU. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's just got, like, this this citrus peel flavor to it with just some light sweetness uh, from the organic honey that is in the uh, fr- in this brew right here. It's very refreshing. This is definitely a drink this, chug, no, no, don't chug it, but enjoy it, right? Uh, after you're out in the hot sun and whatnot and you're just chilling out on the patio or your deck or whatever, yeah, get yourself some Honey Citrus Blonde from Community. Pretty damn good, okay? And, uh, yeah, and I'm not getting any money from this brewery, okay? So you can trust what I'm saying about this brew is for reals, okay? All right, enough yapping about it. Go take a drink. Six. Yes. All right. So that is Community Honey Citrus Blonde. Pick you up some. Hopefully, you can see that right there. All right. And this has been Brew Review Time. <laughs> is this movie a woke after school special? Well, this segment is going to go faster than that five seconds to self destruct because this movie has zero woke in it. Okay. One common facet of the world of woke, though, are strong female characters that feel forced. Now, there are multiple strong, intriguing, luminescent female characters in this, but they write them so that they don't feel forced. Plus, luckily for this movie, nobody associated with this movie went out and vapidly rambled about how this movie is all about female empowerment. Yes. In short, you have kick-ass women in this movie that add, not subtract, to the movie, okay? Now, I seriously suspect that Tom Cruise has absolutely zero time for woke and makes that pointedly clear to everybody involved in his movies. If that's true, he's one of those rare people in Hollywood that realizes that getting advice about how to live from people in that town is like getting fitness advice from Lizzo. Okay, you guys have earned it. I'm going to tell you all about this great product called Nature Clear Recovery Powder. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is Nature Clear Recovery Powder? Well, what it is, is it's a powder that helps you not get a hangover or help recover from a hangover, okay? And also helps you recover from other things like smoking and vaping. So it's an all-around Swiss army knife of recovery, okay? And it's very easy to take because all you got to do is take one of these Nature Clear Recovery Powder packets and you just put it in 12 ounces of water or like a, you know, your average bottle of water. And then what you can do, like some, what some others do, is they put like some lemonade Mio in the bottle of water to make it even tastier. So you just do this. You just put this in some water. You just take this before you go out and you go shake that booty or go sit on a beer patio or whatever you're doing to have a good time. And you don't have to worry about a hangover, okay? Don't have to do it. But if you're out and about and you're like 28 beers in, you're like, oh, my God, I forgot to take my nature clear. What was I thinking? Oh, I wasn't thinking. That's the problem. Have no fear, okay? You're you're still covered. All you got to do is when you get home, you just take the nature clear then, and you still won't get a hangover, okay? It's fantastic, fantastic. Nature clear recovery powder, obviously, they've covered all the facets, okay, all the possibilities. So what you got to do to get this Nature Clear Recovery Powder is just click on the Nature Clear link in the description description below, okay? And then once you pick out your Nature Clear products that you want, get it in the cart, and then in the promo code field, just put in promo code MOVIES, okay? And you're going to get up to 25% off your next order. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. All right, what are you waiting for? Go do it right now, all right? Hey, let's cover more Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And now, 
some random thoughts and facts about this movie. The opening credits start quite a bit amount of time into the movie. Actually, I think even further into the movie than Fallout, I think. Wow. Now, definitely not as much as like the opening, like the, t- the title card uh, in RRR. Okay, you guys may have heard of the movie RRR. If you haven't heard of it and you haven't seen it, definitely check out RRR, the hit movie from India a couple years ago. But the title card in RRR doesn't pop up until like an hour and a half into the movie. It's just, it's unusual, something I've never seen before. Um, Now, back to Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. A big theme in this movie is choice. Uh, Choosing to join the IMF or else, choosing to let characters live, some choices to kill or not to kill, made to try to outsmart the villain, um, now, speaking of the villain, which is uh, as which I'm sure by now you've heard is is AI, um, and you've probably heard that all over the internet or or wherever. Uh, now, to be honest, at least in this movie, I don't think they really showed enough from AI or the entity, as they call it in this movie, uh, in this to dr- really drive home how dangerous and deadly AI in this movie is. I mean, they had a couple of things they threw in uh, to make the entity, entity, the, let's try that again, the entity uh, seem fearsome, okay? But I needed more. I mean, I was never like, how are they going to beat this AI? I have no idea. I never really felt the danger from the AI. I mean, I was cognizant of it, sure, but the movie didn't show like a massive body count at the hands of AI to make you fear it. You didn't really fear the villain of AI or the entity, not the entity, <laughs> the entity in this movie. Now, maybe in part two next year they will. Um, another thing, another fact or thought of the, about this movie is I wouldn't really be doing my job if I didn't say bravo again to Lorne Balfe for his score uh, in this mission movie. Another great mission score for the composer Lauren Balfe. Although I did like his Fallout score better, this is barely a step down from that Fallout score. We'll get to hear more from Lauren Balfe next year uh, as part of the uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 score. And you know what? I can't wait. Okay, hey, just another reminder to subscribe or follow this channel, okay? And also hit that like button down there, okay? It's down there somewhere. Hit that like button, all right? And then hit that notification bell. Yes, hit it. Ding, 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 ding. Hit it to get a notification every single time a new piping hot, fresh, steaming, steaming? Yeah, we'll go with that. Steaming episode of Movies America is ready for you, okay? And then also get down in those comments down below. Comment, questions, whatever, tips, tricks, whatever you want down in the comment section down below this episode, okay? And then also check out TDPN as in Till Death Podcast Network, tdpn.locals.com. And that's our website with all our great content like videos and blogs and articles all about movies and entertainment and sizzling hot kinetic frenetic topics of the day politics what have you cocktail recipes and you can find that all at tdpn.locals.com and a final reminder to vote in the bannies yes the one and only bannies that i'm sure you've heard all across the nation all your friends and family are surely talking about the bannies so you just got to click on the bannies link down in the description And it's your chance to just click on that, and then you get to vote in six different categories that we're going to have winners in for the award show, The Bannies, coming up here in the future. All right? So just do it. Don't think. Just do, as Tom Cruise says in Top Gun Maverick. All right? All right. On with the show. And now for my final thoughts segment that I just shamelessly steal from the late, great Jerry Springer. And my final thoughts begin with this. Finally, finally, 
a terrific movie to wash the recent bad taste of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the Flash, Transformers, Rise of the Beast, out of my mouth. I was beginning to think that the Impossible Mission was finding a good summer blockbuster to actually watch this year. Okay. <laughs> now we get this and Oppenheimer back to back. Some might throw Barbie in the mix in there too. So as I'm sure you'd guess, I would strongly recommend that you make like Tom Cruise and run to the theater to see Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, preferably in IMAX if available, or the next PLF or premium large format theater that you can find in your area, okay? So with that, hey people, get out there. Those movies aren't going to watch themselves. See ya. Hey guys, don't leave the video quite yet. Okay, I've got a popo. They're coming after me. And I don't have much time to tell you, but you need to like and subscribe this video right here down below. It's right down there. It's just what. It's waiting for you down there, okay? And make sure you watch these videos over here, too. You'll be doing me a big favor. I'll be in handcuffs pretty soon. All right. Thanks for watching.